Okay, let's do a fun problem, at least fun for me. I think it'll be fun because I actually haven't done this before and uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. So it's going to be a surprise for both of us. But let's just get started. So the idea is to look at the motion of a charge near a fixed dipole. So here I have two charges. I'm going to call these uh, plus QD for dipole and minus QD and they're separated by a distance S. And that's what a dipole is. I'll include a link down below uh, for a video about the electric field due to a dipole. And then over here I have a, another charge. I'll just call this Q1. I don't know why. I'm calling that Q1. And I want to model the motion of this charge. It's free to move in the region of this dipole. Okay, so I'm going to give it an initial velocity that way because I know that's going to be pretty interesting. And I'm pretty sure this will oscillate back and forth. Um, but I, I want to model the whole thing and then play with it. And then we can do a whole bunch of cool stuff after that once we build a model. So the very first thing is I guess we need to start from the beginning. There's a lot of stuff going on here, and that's what makes this problem really easy. I mean, really interesting. It's not easy. Um, and we're going to do it in Python so we can get an animation. Close group vPython. So let's first imagine that there is a charge right here, and there is a force acting on it. In this case, if I have a positive charge right there, there's going to be a net electric force pulling it this way. Because this positive charge repels, this negative charge attracts, but the negative charge is closer, so there's going to be a greater attractive force than repulsive force. So there's going to be a force pulling it that way. And in fact, uh, we can calculate that force F as Q1 times E, where E is the electric field due to the dipole. Now, you know, I derived this electric field. This is the far field approximation of the electric field due to a dipole. So if you're if the distance from the dipole is much greater than the separation, then um, then you can use this as one over r squared because it's one of our cubed, I'm sorry. But it'd be pointing towards it. But the important thing is if I have a force acting on a particle, what does that force do? It changes the momentum. So this is the only force acting on it. So I can say F equals delta P over delta T, where P is the momentum, M times V. And so that force changes the momentum. Now, if the object is moving this way, and I have a force that's so going to change and, and turn a little bit this way. So maybe it ends up over here, but now I have a problem. And the problem is that the direction and magnitude of the electric force changes due to this dipole. So it's a difficult problem. However, if I break this into small time steps, let's say delta t equals 0.01 seconds, I'm just guessing at a time interval. During that time interval, I can find the momentum at the beginning and end of the time interval. And, and I'll give you another link on this too. I'm not going through all the details. I can take this equation and it becomes P2 equals P1 plus F delta T. So I can find, if I know the momentum at the beginning of the interval and the force, which I can calculate based on the position, then I can find the momentum at the end of the time interval. Now, I can also use this momentum at the end of the time interval to then find the new position of the object. So using the definition of average velocity, I get this. R2 equals R1 plus P2 over M delta T. So this says, if I take that momentum and assume that the momentum is constant during that time interval, which is totally not true, but it's true enough if delta T is small, then I can find the position R2 at the end of that time interval based on the position at the beginning of the time interval. And then I can find the time at the end of the time interval, not that that really matters too much. And then I can go back up here and calculate the force. And then if I just keep repeating this process, I can, I can find exactly what I want, which is the motion of this particle. And it should work, and it's going to be awesome. Okay, now we do have one small problem here, and that's I need to find the force. It depends on the position of this, but I have a dipole. So I can't use this equation. This is only true if it's on the axis of the dipole, so anywhere along this line and not too close. So instead, I'm going to have to find it exactly. And so if I have a single point charge, Q, and I want to find the electric field at some other location, RO. So here's the vector locating that point charge. Here's the vector locating the observation location, which is where I'm going to put this charge. Then I can find the vector from the charge to the location. It's just 
R observation minus RQ. And then this is the electric field due to a point charge. It's one over four pi epsilon naught, that's just a constant, Q over the magnitude of R squared times R hat. So R hat's a unit vector in that direction. So if I'm over here, then I'm gonna need to find uh, the electric field due to the negative charge. So it would actually be going this way, E minus. And then I have the electric field due to the positive charge, E plus. And then I add those two together, E would be equal to E plus plus E minus as vectors. And then I can find, so I need to actually do that before I calculate the force. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now there is one other thing, and that's initial conditions. Because here I have a problem. I have uh, an electric interaction, but if I want this to move in a circle, that's going to depend on the mass. So I'm going to need to be careful about the, parent, the values I pick here. So let's just, let's just do a rough approximation to get some values. So here's my dipole. And then here's my charge, Q1. And then this is a distance r from the center. And I want it to move in a circle, right? Because if this is moving this way with the velocity v1 and the force is that way, f, it's going to make it move in a circle. So that's an f. Let's get an expression for the force. Uh, this is going to be qd, and this is s, the dipole separation. So the force is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 qd s over r cubed. And that force is going to be mass times acceleration, but it's moving in a circle. So for an object moving in a circle, the acceleration is v squared over r. That's centripetal acceleration. So it's going to be m. Oh, there's a q right here too. Q1, right? Because that's the, that's the electric field. I need to multiply by Q1 to get the force. M V squared over R. And I wrote this as a scalar equation just so it's easier to deal with. These are in the same direction. So this cancels with the one of those. Uh, and I want to find, let's say I find the mass. So let's pick some things. So QD is, I'm picking 5 nanocoulombs. Uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Q1, let's say, is, I don't know. I'm just drawing a blank here. Let's say 6 nanocoulombs. Um, R, that's important. Uh, let's say this R distance is uh, 5 centimeters, so 0 0.05. Uh, I need S, it's going to be much smaller, 0 0.001. Uh, and then the velocity. Let's pick a velocity of uh, 0 0.2 meters per second. And we can change all these things. So from that, if I, if I pick all those things, I can calculate the mass. So the mass would be equal to uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, 2 Q1 QD S over R squared V squared. And then so I can use all these values and get the mass. And then that will make sure that I have reasonable values, but I may have to adjust those as we go on. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to Python. I'm going to start coding away. I'm going to have a great old time. We're going to make visual stuff. There's a lot of parts of this that you may not have seen before, but, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, let's just jump into it and get started. Okay, so this is, if you haven't seen this before, uh, this is GlowScript v Python, and I'm using Trinket.io, which is just a way to uh, write the code. You could go to GlowScript.org too. So this is Python, uh, but it has these visual objects in it. So I can do things like this, uh, super simple, just say sphere, and then run that, and I'll get the output window over here, and I get this three-dimensional sphere, and I can rotate around. So I can make I can make the dipole and the point charges as spheres, and I think that's kind of cool. Okay, let's start off with our constants. So I don't want to write 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I'm going to say k equals 9 times 10 to the ninth. I'm going to get my sheet of paper where to put that right here. So I can look. Okay, um, q1. This is a little, bit, a little bit bigger. q1, I said, was equal to 6 nanocoulombs, 6 times 10 to the negative ninth. Uh, qd 
is 5 nanocoulombs. Uh, S is 0 0.001. Uh, R0, I'm going to call it, that's the starting position, 0 0.05, 5 centimeters. Uh, V0 is 0 0.2. Is that everything I need? Yeah. Okay, so let's just go ahead and calculate the mass. So M equals uh, K times 2 times Q1 times QD, and this is just that equation I had before, times S divided by R squared times V squared, except this is R0 and V0. <clears throat> now, and you'll notice that there's no units in here because in a numerical calculation, we're actually just using numbers. Uh, and, and if I put units in there, it's not, it's not a number. So I'm not gonna put the numbers in now, but you could put the units in later. You could put them in as a comment. You could say Coulomb if you wanted to. Okay, let's just print this mass out just to see what happens. Uh, I just want to see what the value is. So, oh, that's really low. So, hmm. What if I make the, if I want to make the mass larger, let's make these uh, 10 to the negative, let's make this 10 to the negative 6th. Okay, so that's still super tiny, but at least, I don't know, in my mind, I, it makes more sense. So, it does, it, it's not super important. Okay, let's make the dipole and make the charge. So I'm going to say um, QP. This is my positive charge. I'm actually going to draw it as a sphere. So it's going to be an object sphere. Its position is going to be on the x-axis. So I'm going to say uh, the position is equal to vector uh, S over 2, 0, 0, right? Because if the distance between those two is S, then this is S over 2 in the positive direction. The radius is going to be equal to, let's say, s over, let's say s over 2. Let's just see what that looks like. And this is my positive one, so I'm going to make it red. And then let's do the same thing for the negative one. Qn equals sphere, position equals vector, negative s over 2, 0, 0. Radius is the same. S over 2, color equals color dot blue, cyan. Cyan looks a little bit better. <clears throat> the blue is kind of too dark, it doesn't show up. Okay, let's run that and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's my dipole. I like that. Nice. Okay, now let's add in uh, my charge. So I have Q1, oh, I can't do that. Let's just call it Q. Q equals sphere. Position equals vector, negative r0, 0, 0, 0. Radius equals uh, s. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's give it, make it yellow. Color equals color dot yellow. And I'm going to be moving this one. So let's make it, uh, have it leave a trail. So I can say make trail equals true. And run that, see what that looks like. Okay, that's kind of far away, but... I'm fine with that. Yep. I kind of like this to be a little bit bigger. Let's make these just S. They'll overlap, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So now what do we need to do? Uh, we need a couple other initial conditions. I need I need the charges of all these things. I have I have those. I guess I don't need that. I do need the initial momentum of the charge. So I'm going to say this. Uh, Q dot P, that's the mo a property of Q, the momentum. And let's say it's equal to M times vector 0, V0, 0. zero. Right, so it's going to be going in the positive Y direction. And that will make it move in a circle. And we can change it later. Okay. Uh, next, I need time. T equals 0 and DT equals 0 0.0. Let's put 0, 0, 1. Okay, now I'm going to make a loop, and I'm going to do all those calculations in every part of the loop. Uh, and there are better ways to do this, but I, I would like to make a function, but I'm not going to make a function. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, let's just say while t is less than, I don't know, let's run it for uh, five seconds so we can change that. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is this, rate 1000. So I'm going to be animating the motion of this. And 
Python needs to know how fast to display each iteration of my animation. So a rate of 1,000 says don't do any more than 1,000 calculations every second. 1,000 loops every second for this loop. And since I have a time step of 1 1,000th, this would mean it should take 5 seconds to run, if it can run that fast. If you have a super complicated program, it's possible that um, it can't keep up. But so it says don't go faster than this, because that's what that means. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate the electric field uh, at the location of my charge. Uh, so let's find, let's, let's call this, uh, let's do it this way. Okay, I'm going to say RP is the vector from the positive charge to my observation location, which is the charge. So that's going to be uh, Q.POS minus QP.POS. QP.POS is the vector locating that positive charge, and Q.POS is the location of my charge that I want to move. I can do the same thing for the negative. Q.POS minus Q in dot POS. Now let's calculate. Uh, oops. Let's calculate the electric the E positive. So E P is going to be K. I don't. I'm not going to put the four pi over epsilon naught. Mm -hmm. Times uh, Q P Q D Q D. That's the charge of the positive times the unit vector rp. So it's going to be norm rp. Norm returns the unit vector in the direction of rp divided by the magnitude of rp squared. I can't square rp because it's a vector, but I need to take the magnitude of it first. Okay. That's the electric field due to the positive charge at that location. Now I need the same thing for the negative. It's going to be negative k times qd times norm rn divided by mag rn squared. So here I have a negative sign because I'm using that same QD. The charge of the negative charge is negative QD. Okay. And then I can say E equals EN plus EP. So those are vectors. So it's going to add them up as vectors and produce a vector. Now I can calculate the force. The force is equal to what do I call it? Q1 times E. We're good. Now I can update the momentum. Q dot P equals Q dot P plus F times DT. I can update the position of Q. Q dot POS equals Q dot POS plus Q dot P times DT divided by M. All right, so QP over M is the velocity. Okay, now I need to update time. T equals T plus DT. And I think that should work, but it might not, because you never know about these things. Let's just run it and see what happens. Are you kind of excited? I should save it. I'll run it first. That worked. Okay, now you do notice a couple things here, but let me, let me go ahead and save this as dipole oscillation save. And I, I should probably make Make a, a, a snapshot. Is that one good? No, I'll find someone later. Okay. Uh, so one of the things you notice here is that it's oscillating back and forth, but getting a little bit closer. That is what I expected. I did expect it to oscillate back and forth, and I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. But what about this creep? It's getting closer and closer and closer. Let's do the following. Let's... Uh, make a plot of the energy as a function of time. Uh, so in this case, if I include the system of the mass charge and the dipole, uh, then, then the system can have uh, really two types of energy. There is the kinetic energy, and then there is the electric potential energy of the charge. Um, I guess I need to calculate the electric potential energy, uh, but I can do that. And let's plot kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy. So to do that, I'm gonna make a graph. So let's say G1 equals graph, uh, title equals dipole oscillation. 
uh, x title is equal to title is equal to time in seconds, and then which could do, we could do lots. This is time. That's fine. Y title is going to be equal to energy in joules. Okay, so now that just creates the the encapsulation that for the for the graphs. I need the actual graphs. So let's say F K is going to be the kinetic energy. So it's going to be a type G curve. Uh, the color is going to be red. I always think of kinetic energy as red. And let's put a label. Label equals K E. And then uh, F U is going to be the potential G curve. Uh, color equals color dot blue. Label equals U. And then FE is going to be the total G curve color equals color dot green. Label equals E total. Okay. So now down here in my loop, I can plot a point on the graph. <clears throat> so the first thing I need to do is to uh, calculate the potential energy. So I'm going to say, um, I already have, I'm going to calculate it up here because I moved those. No, I'm going to use that. That's fine. So let's say V equals the potential due to point charge is uh, K Q over R. Okay. So I'm going to, I need, I have two point charges. I have uh, the positive and the negative point charge. So I'm going to say this is K times uh, Q D divided by mag R P. That's the potential due to the positive charge. because I'm using the distance of the positive charge. And then I have minus K times QD divided by mag RN. All right, so that's the negative potential. And then U is going to be equal to uh, Q1 times V. Does that make sense? So that's the electric potential multiplied by the charge. I get the potential energy. Uh, so the kinetic energy K is going to be equal to, uh, it's going to be one half mv squared, but I don't have the velocity. So instead I can use p squared over 2m. So let's do that. So uh, in order to square the momentum, I need to take the magnitude. So it's going to be mag uh, q dot p squared divided by 2 times m. And then e equals k plus u. Now let's plot all these things. So I'm going to say F, K, what did I call it? Capital K? No, I, I called it lowercase. Let's call it capital because I think that makes more sense. F, K, dot plot, uh, T, K. So it's going to plot one data point on my graph with a, with a horizontal value of T and a vertical value of K. F, U, dot plot, T, U. F E dot plot T E. Okay, let's see what this sucker looks like. Because there's my oscillation. Huh. Kind of surprised. I guess I was expecting the energy to not be conserved. But it looks like the energy is conserved, right? It looks like uh, it's right around zero and didn't change. So that's that's kind of interesting. But 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 energy is conserved and that's that's great. Okay, I think we, we've got we've gotten everything we wanted, but now we just get to play. So let's go up here and just do something whack out. So I'm, what if I give it not in the x y plane? What if I give it some motion in the z plane too? I don't know what's going to happen. Let's just try it. So let's give it some velocity of uh, 0.2 times v0. So now it's moving in, in the y direction and the z direction to start off with. Ooh, look at that. What the heck? Oh, it escaped. It's too fast. But, but energy looks like it's still conserved. Okay, so let's go back over here and change this to uh, 0.7. Because if you have, if your total energy is zero, then that would be a bound, some type of bound state. 
uh, or negative. But if your total energy is positive, then you can get an infinite distance away and have the potential go to zero and still have energy. Okay, so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit and see what happens. Oh, that was bad. That was too slow. It, so what happened there? I should show you what happened. I shouldn't hide stuff. Okay, so what happened there? You can see that by the graph. The energy jumped up. So uh, as it got too close to the dipole, uh, the the jump size, the time step is too too large. And it actually got really, really close to one of those charges with a super high force, which pushed it. And then that assumption that the force is constant no longer held true. So it, it got too much energy. And that's just an accident. I could fix that by making a smaller time step or I could fix that by making this a little bit bigger. Let's say 0.9. Oh, it did it again. Okay, that was, so that was 0.95. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to fix this. Zero, one, make a smaller time step and zero, let's see what happens then. No, it's still doing it. Okay, so it's, it's not, let's make this 0.1 times. I'm trying to get something really cool. No? Okay, let's try this. Zero in the, and let's give it some velocity in the, in the let's say negative 0.1 times V zero. So it's now it's, it's moving off at, away. I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, it's still doing that. Uh, let's put this at just V zero. That's kind of cool. This isn't 3D, but okay. Let's try that. Let's try this as negative 0.1 times v0 in the in the z direction too, or positive. And it might. It's just gonna go away. Maybe not. Maybe it didn't go away. Um, 0.9 times. Ah, it's getting too close. Um, okay, I think I think that looks pretty nice. The the Z motion is very very small though. Um, let me just try something. What if I just move it in just the, let's try this. Let's try moving it in the Z direction. Zero, zero, V zero. Okay, so it, it oscillates that way. That's pretty cool. I wonder if I can make it oscillate in both directions at the same time. So let's say this is equal to V zero V zero. What happens then? It just escapes. I bet that if I give it the same kinetic energy, so if I if I have two of those, and I'm squaring it. If I if I multiply by the square root of two, let's try that. So square root of wait square root of 0.5 times square root of 0.5 times. So now it's, I think it still has the same initial kinetic energy. Okay, so, but it stays in that plane. It's it's in its new plane, right? That's kind of cool. And let's just check the energy. So the energy is conserved. That is pretty cool. Let's increase the energy of this one as 1.01 times. So it's a little bit more. Okay, that's that's interesting. I'm kind of excited. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna give you this code and you can play around with it to your, to find initial conditions that are cool and interesting. Um, that was, that, that's my that's my thumbnail. Uh, and, and, and to see what you get. But, but the cool thing is that we can model complicated situations like this and energy is conserved and I think that's awesome. So that's that.
And don't forget, I am giving you the link to the electric dipole stuff down below. Uh, if there's something about this program that you that didn't make sense, let me know because I have a video about how to build all these things uh, in more detail. I'll be happy to share them. I just forget which ones go with which. So that's that.